हेलो क्लास वेलकम टू कनेक्टेड हेलो क्लास इन टूडेज लेसन वी लर्न द स्टोरी ऑफ मेजर एच पी एस अहलोवालिया हु वॉज अ मेंबर ऑफ द फर्स्ट सक्सेसफुल इंडियन एक्सपेडेशन टू माउंट एवरेस्ट इन 1965. This lesson will tell about his feelings when he stood at the highest point in the world. Let us understand his story in his own words. Children, as we read the first paragraph of this lesson, we understand Major H P S Ahluwalia's feelings as he stands at the highest peak in the world, looking over the miles of the panorama below them, thanking God for the opportunity he was given, but had a feeling of humility and a slight feeling of relief that it was all finally. Despite being overwhelmed with his success he felt something else in his heart he felt that he had achieved the biggest thing in the world and anything he did next to this would bring him down this feeling can be generally described as the joy of achieving something great in life but not being able to achieve something great eventually made his heart feel heavy children let us continue reading the story i request one of you to volunteer and read aloud the text from your book for the class In doing so, your teacher will help you if you get stuck. Let's continue with the next paragraph. Very good. Now let's quickly understand just of what you read. Major H P S Alwalia, a member of India's first expedition to Mount Everest, the highest peak in the world, explains the charisma the mountains have. He shares his experience of how that expedition changed him as a human being and how any such adventures and achievements shape you as a human being. He narrates that achievements like these are unforgettable and the memories stay in one's heart and mind for a lifetime. While descending from Everest with a tired body, he thought to himself, whether these memories he made would stay a lifetime or would fade, lie in one corner of his brain with everyday hustle. Moving on class, I request someone else to volunteer and read aloud the next paragraph from your book for the class. Impressive. Now let's take a quick recap on what you just read. With all these thoughts, Major Ahluwalia asked himself why people desire to do such adventures in their life. The hard work and effort that goes behind accomplishing these adventures is not an easy job. It is a road full of obstacles, but human beings feel a sense of joy in overcoming these hurdles and emerging successful. These expeditions require immense physical exertion, endurance, and power. He shares that achieving these physical qualities was a challenging task for him too. Moving on students, I request someone else to volunteer and read aloud the next part from your book for the class. Impressive. Now let's take a quick recap on what you just read. Major Aluwalia shares his personal opinion on the questions he has raised above. He says that he has been attracted by mountains since he was young. He believes that mountains are a unique way of connecting with the divine. He describes the beauty of the majestic mountains and how they are nature's best creation. Moving on class, I request someone else to volunteer and read aloud the next paragraph from your book for the class. Very good class. Now let's take a quick recap on what you just read. Major appreciates the beauty of the mountains and raises another question as to why he chose the majestic Everest. Why not something else? He now begins to explain the real struggle it takes to achieve this task. He begins by saying that this mountain is the highest and the mightiest of all. It demands immense energy from someone who wishes to climb it. The journey throws various obstacles like extreme climatic conditions, low oxygen levels. He described the road as rock and ice. He explains how the journey downwards is as extensive as climbing up, but accompanied by a sense of achievement, sense of accomplishment and happiness. Major when sits back and reminisces about his days it tells us that he instantly gets transported to another world when he thinks about the mountains he associates his attachment with the mountains as a result of the spirituality beauty might aloofness roughness and the challenges he faced while on the expedition if ever he sits back and rethinks why he chose mount everest only he doesn't find any definite answer he believes his instincts made him take the adventure and look for an answer to the question was like searching for something in a dark room in this paragraph the author explained how everest is beyond just a physical activity he says the climb gives a sense of fulfillment containment and satisfaction which is way beyond physical success 
He also said the physical conquering was just a byproduct of the enormous experience he got. The author tells the readers that the climb is an adventure that a man never forgets and is an emotional as well as a spiritual experience. In the next paragraph, Major Aulowalia discusses his story and his journey of climbing. He asks the readers to consider and imagine the journey towards the last climb, the scenery that you are sharing a room with another climber. The companion climber was paving the step by cutting the hard ice. He narrates how difficult it is climbing in such a situation when your companion is helping your client using a rope and you're using every ounce of energy to climb up the rope. At that point of the summit, someone needs to lend a helping hand. He narrates that various climbers have given stories about how they received help at the moment they were almost quit. Adverse climatic conditions and difficulty in breathing make the climber curse himself as to why he had put his body to do such things. Sure he explains the importance of a good companion who pushes you through the hard times, though the times you feel like giving up to the times you feel that you cannot move ahead. A good companion holds your hands through the complete journey. A true companion does not let you give up. He inspires you and gets inspired by you and by this connection even the most difficult task could be completed. While reading this paragraph I was able to imagine beautiful snow-clad mountains glowing because of the sunlight. Major Ahluwala describes the silvery peaks and compares them to a beautiful necklace. The enthralling view reminds him of his experiences and he also quotes that looking down from the mountains gave a sense of divinity and man would first bow down to his god for bestowing him with the experience as major aulawal explained in the previous paragraph that how the entire journey towards the summit of everest is a divine experience he also mentioned how looking down from the top of the mountain feels like going to a god and thanking him for this experience sure he shares his experience where all his teammates left pictures of the divine people they believed in collecting a picture of guru nanak his friend ravan left a picture of godness durga another friend pihu dorji left a replica of buddha he also mentions that climbing the summit of your mind is very important and mind fully aware of the current challenges that we have to face human beings achieving all these obstacles step by step gives a feeling of accomplishment and it is very important to conquer your difficulties your weakness and emerge victoriously towards the end of the chapter the writer concludes that his experience of climbing everest has given him through real life he explains how climbing everest has given him the correct outlook and vision for living life he compares climbing mount everest with the internal everest that resides in our minds children with this We have now come to the end of this chapter. Let us quickly recall what we learned today by solving these fun exercises. You have 5 minutes to try these out. Select students. Now match your answer with this answer sheet. Now let us all solve some question answers. I will read out a question, and you will get one minute to think about the answer. After one minute, and I will give you the answer, and we will discuss the next question. Excellent students now match your answer with this answer sheet Now let us all solve some question answers. 
I will read out a question and you will get 1 minute to think about the answer. After 1 minute and I will give you the answer and we will discuss the next question. Great going students, now match your answer with this answer sheet. Moving on to the next question. I will read out a question and you will get 1 minute to think about the answer after 1 minute and I will give you the answer and we will discuss the next question. Now that we have to learn new words and phrases, let's move on to the next part of the activity. In this part, read the questions carefully and try answering them within 1 minute. Think carefully and then pick out the right answer. Fill in the blanks in the following dialogues, choosing suitable phrases from those given in the box. Very good dear children, looks like most of you have managed to solve this exercise on time. For those who couldn't mind, it's never too late to improve. Let's quickly discuss the answers. I request you all to cross check with the answer sheet given below. Looks like most of you have got their answers correct. Well done children, I'm so proud of you. Quickly moving on to the next section. Again, in this section, you will be given 5 minutes to solve, so put your thinking caps on. Way to go students, I will discuss the answers, you cross check with yours and we will then take the next question. Let's move on to the next part of the activity. In this part, read the questions carefully and try answering them within 1 minute. Think carefully and then pick out the right answer. Wait to go students, I will discuss the answers, you cross check with yours and we will then take the next question. Let's move on to the next part of the activity. In this part, read the questions carefully and try answering them within 1 minute. Think carefully and then pick out the right answer. Please take reference to the above question. Way to go students. I will discuss the answers. You cross check with yours and we will then take the next question. Thank you for being such lovely students. Let's move on to the last activity of this lesson and then it's a wrap. This activity is going to be homework for you. Hence understand your responsibility correctly. Some composition may be read aloud to the entire class afterwards. Write a composition describing a visit to the hills or any place which you found. Beautiful and inspiring. Before writing, work in small groups. Discuss the points given below and decide if you want to use some of these points in your composition. That's it for today. Thank you class and I hope you all had fun learning. Hello class, welcome to Connected. Hello class, in today's session we will read the poem of a schoolboy who doesn't seem to look happy. This poem will further tell us why is the boy unhappy. Why does he compare himself to a bird that lives in a cage or a plant that withers when it should blossom. The poet of this poem is William Blake. Dear children, the poem we are going to learn today is about a schoolboy. 
Usually, when we think about going to school, it makes us so happy. The feeling of meeting our friends, sharing our lunch boxes, and learning makes us so happy. But there's something different happening in the poem. Let's find out what. Could one of you please volunteer and read the first stanza of the poem? This stanza depicts the scene of a beautiful bright morning. The poet feels very energetic and happy when he wakes up and hears the bird chirp. The sounds of the morning. He feels that these sounds and the environments are a sweet company or a companion. Now, the next child, please read the next stanza to find out what happens next. This stanza tells us about how the poet's mood suddenly changed with the thought of going to school. All the happiness he collected from the beautiful summer morning atmosphere suddenly vanished. He started thinking about how he spends his day in school and how difficult it is for him to do so. Dear children, let's read ahead and find out what exactly is making the poet upset. The stanza tells us about the way the poet spends his time in school. He is distracted and cannot focus on his work. He explains how his books do not engage him nor sitting and learning makes him happy. The poet has further made a beautiful comparison to explain his art. Let's read ahead and find out. So students, you see, the poet has made a beautiful comparison between him as a student and the birds chirping out. He thinks that the birds that fly freely in the air when caged are still able to sing their heart out. But when a child does that, he is constantly under the fear of annoyance. So he has to lower his wings and mold himself as society expects a child to be. Let's find out what happens next. In this stanza of the poem, the poet expresses his feelings by narrating a situation where he feels if the buds are cut off, I would the tender plants are cut. How would summer have the beauty it has? Similarly, the poet feels if the children are restricted from being happy and living their lives, how would they blossom and flourish? Now that we have gone through the people, let us solve some questions to understand the concept and ideology better. Below are the meanings of some words we came across in the poem with the simplified meanings. Read them carefully and try remembering them. Students, did you see how the words in the poem are twisted to enhance the effect of the poem? They are simple words but written in different ways. Now read the next question and find out the answers from the poem. Let's quickly discuss the answers to the previous question. Just like the above question expresses joy, the next question expresses grief. Read carefully and do as directed. Student students, let's begin discussing the answers to the above question. Read the next question and find out the answer from the poem. Do as directed. Excellent students, let's begin discussing the answers to the above question. Read the next question and find out the answer from the poem. Do as directed. Excellent students, let's begin discussing the answers to the above question. Moving on to the last part of the exercise. There is another poem given below. You are expected to read through the poem and compare it with the poem we just studied. I am going to read a poem. Listen to it carefully and compare with the schoolboy. The one furrow, when I was young, I went to school with pencil and foot rule, sponge and slate, and sat on a tall stool at learning skate. When I was older, the gate swung wide, clever and keen-eyed, in I pressed, but found in the mind sprite, no peace, no rest. Then who was it taught me back to go to cattle and barrow, field and plow, to keep to the fun furrow, as I do now. So that's it for today. 
थैंक यू क्लास एंड आई होप यू ऑल हैड फन लर्निंग